Hey everybody, thought I would make a video today on the Black Death. Now with all the reports of the Ebola outbreak and how scary that looks, I thought I would review a chapter from one of my favorite books called The Gods of Eden by William Bramley, where he covers what people were actually reporting at the times and places of, this, out, of these outbreaks of Black Death, or the bubonic plague. Now The Gods of Eden is uh, a rather, I would say, controversial book. Um, by the way, I am doing this without a microphone today. I have been away from home for a while, and I'm not even sure where my mic is, so if the audio is a little off, I apologize. But anyway, this book is, uh, I would say, rather controversial. Uh, the basic premise of the book is that an alien race has been watching over mankind from the beginning and kind of manipulating our actions here on Earth, especially where it comes to religion and warfare. Um, it is a book that I, I necessarily don't agree with everything that is written in it, but uh, I must say this, you don't necessarily have to agree with everything written in a book to find it very interesting, very interesting and learn a lot from it. Uh, he puts a lot of great information in this book. Uh, William Bramley spent many years researching this book. It is well written, well researched. I have respect for the author, so a lot of what he has to say I really take with a lot of credence though I necessarily don't agree with it. And the whole alien race watching over mankind thing, I think that is something that you can't necessarily believe in 100% or you can't necessarily deny it 100%. So a lot of these controversial issues, I'm just kind of stuck somewhere in the middle, so I usually don't talk about them because I would be defending both sides of the fence. But anyway, this is what William Bramley has to say about the Black Death. I'm going to leave the link below in case any of you want to read this. It is one of the most unsettling chapters in a book, really, I've ever read. Um, though I just necessarily, you know, take it with a grain of salt and necessarily don't believe 100% in it. And uh, I'm just going to read a little bit of it and maybe spark your interest. It says, Europe in the 13th century was beginning to recover from the economic and social, social disruption caused by the Crusades. Signs of a European Renaissance were visible in the widening of intellectual and artistic horizons and it goes on to say this continued until a disastrous event abruptly brought it to a halt that event was the bubonic plague also known as the black death and he just gives some facts about the black death that started in asia and soon spread to europe where it killed well over 25 million people about one-third of europe's total population the epidemic first spread through Europe between 1347 and 1350. And uh, he goes into the two types of the plague. One was known as the bubonic type, which was the most common. And it was seen to be, or it was theorized that it was caused by rodent infestations. And what he really goes into is the second form of the plague contrib contributing to the Black Death is a highly contagious type known as pneumonic plague. It is marked by shivering, rapid breathing, and the coughing up of blood. Body temperatures are high, and death normally follows three to four days after the disease has been contracted. The second type of the plague is nearly always fatal and transmits best in cold weather and in poor ventilations. Some physicians today believe it was this second form of the pneumonic plague which was responsible for most of the casualties of the Black Death because of the crowding and poor hygienic conditions then prevalent in Europe. We would normally shake our heads at this tragic period of human history and be thankful that modern medicine has developed cures for these dreaded diseases. However, troubling enigmas about the Black Death still linger. Many outbreaks occurred in summer during warm weather in uncrowded regions. Not all outbreaks of the bubonic plague were preceded by rodent infestation. In fact, only a minority of the cases seem to be related to an increase in the presence of vermin. The greatest puzzle about the Black Death is how it was able to strike isolated human populations which had no contact with earlier infected areas. These epidemics also tended to end abruptly. It says, to solve these puzzles, an historian, an historian would normally look to records from the plague years to see what people were reporting. When he does, he encounters stories so stunning and unbelievable that he is likely to reject them as the fantasies and superstitions of a badly frightened minds. A great many people throughout Europe and other plague-stricken regions of the world 
were reporting that outbreaks of the plague were caused by foul-smelling mists. Those mists frequently appeared after unusually bright lights in the sky. The historians quickly discovered that the mists and bright lights were reported far more frequently and in many more locations than were rodent infestations. The plague years were in fact a period of heavy UFO activity. And he goes in to talk about the mists and he talks about uh, biochemical warfare and he goes into uh, chronicling many UFO um, sightings from back then and what people were actually reporting and how they were kind of confusing uh, these UFOs with comics comets but what they were describing actually sound like UFOs and it says it is true some that some reported comets were probably just that comets some may also have been small meteors or fireballs centuries ago people were generally far more superstitious than they are today and so natural meteors and similar phenomena were often reported as precursors to later disasters even though no real life connection existed on the other hand it is important to note that almost any object unusual object in the sky was called the comet and he chronicles many sightings that appear to describe ufos it says this later on in the chapter it says this sightings of unusual aerial phenomenon usually occurred from several minutes to a year before an outbreak of the plague where there was a gap between such a sighting and the arrival of a plague a second phenomenon was sometimes reported the appearance of frightening human-like figures dressed in black those figures were often seen on the outskirts of a town or village and their presence would signal the outbreak of an epidemic almost immediately a summary written in 1682 tells of one such visit a century earlier in Brandenburg in Germany there appeared in 1559 humble men of whom at first 15 and later on 12 were seen the foremost had beside their posteriors little heads the other fearful faces and long skies which with which they cut at the oats so that the swish could be heard at a great distance but the oats remained standing when a quantity of people came running out to see them they went on with their mowing the visit of strange men in the oat field was followed immediately by a severe outbreak of the plague in brandenburg the incident raises intriguing questions who were these mysterious figures what were the long skies like instruments they were they held that emitted a loud swooshing sound it appeared that skies may have been long instruments designed to spray poison or germ-laden gas and these men in black that is exactly where the grim reaper comes from these reports from this period of history so once again i said this is uh, pretty controversial but what i like is he takes actual reports from these times and places that the black death was occurring um, i will leave the link below uh, just thought this was interesting uh, enough to share um, very controversial don't necessarily have to believe in something 100 percent to find it interesting just thought i would share the gods of eden and the black death hope you have a nice day take care